Okay, so uh, when I talk about big data, I generally very often ask people to think of a day in your life and think of, there are so many decisions that we make that, we, I mean, we, we make those decisions without knowing the full information, but if you think about that, there's no real reason that you don't know those information. Like, for example, uh, okay, is it going to rain today? Uh, that one we have l okay uh, uh, information generally, thanks to weather services. Uh, but uh, like, okay, which uh, if you're trying to buy a camera, which one is best? So th there are like a lot of these kind of uh, decisions. And being humans, we are very good at taking those decisions without enough information, however, uh, technic technological, if you think, there's no reason you could collect, connect, and put it together and make those decisions available to you, data available to you, so that you can make decisions, right? So, uh, so basically, what big data is trying to do, its premise is to collect all that data, analyze, put in context, right? and use it to make everybody's life better. Right now, the, 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 these ideas can make a difference for everybody, like not just for organizations. However, the organizations are generally focused on this lot, A, because they try to make more money by making the, solving the problems of other people, Right? And of course, and make themselves efficient. Right? Therefore, that's why like, uh, a lot of organizations uh, think about this a lot. Right? Again, I'm, I won't explain all the everything, but the source shows some of the different use cases where big data can be very useful. Right? It could be for come up with new products, make your internal processes better versus better interaction with customers, better supply chain management so on and so forth, right? So, so if you try to use big data, very abstract sense, what you try to do is, you try to collect data, you try to analyze, and then you try to communicate what you built, right? Basically, I'll, uh, so in my talk, I'm talking about WSO2 analytics platform. So I, I would use this, basically, through the presentation, I am explaining this picture. Right? That's what I would do. Right? So, um, okay. So then, very. Oops. 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 Uh, what happened? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so when you try to. Uh, so, so we'll talk about each of these parts. Another very interesting, very often discussed part of this, how would you do this analysis? How, where are these different things come into play? So this picture kind of try to tell that story. So if you, if you take incidents or events or data collected over the timeline, right, this picture try to tell where different techniques would be useful, right? For example, if you are if you are making sense and analyzing things that happen roughly, that one one hour limit is subjected to the use case, older than one hour, let's say, then you do batch analysis because you have time to put it to a disk, take it out, analyze, etc. However, if you want to know. Present, now when you say present, it generally doesn't mean right now only. From right now to roughly about one hour, it depends on the use case. Uh, the batch or Hadoop MapReduce can't give you the answer fast enough, at least in, in most use cases. I mean, if you have a little bit of, like if you have like thousand events and then it's fine, it'll give you answer fine, but if the data is big, it'll, uh, like, it'll take time to analyze. So then about this one hour window, if you want the data be not to be stale more than that, right? Where you need these technologies like real-time analytics and in interactive uh, analytics, okay? 
and of course then if you want to know the future if you want to predict into the future what already didn't happen right of course you need predictive analytics okay so so let's go through each of them so basically so we have this one api to collect data right so so if you are putting data into a database what you relational database what you do is you go and define a table describing how your data look like similarly if you want to put data into our analytics platform you go and define what we call a stream it's pretty much a table although it's it's the data the it's a uh, it's a table that never ends forever it'll extend into the future right so then basically that uh, statement to create the table create the stream very much like create table it's basically say i have these fields it has these these types right after that you could push events into those defined streams okay so so the uh, what we had seen is that the decision to do kind what kind of analysis is a short term decision like for example generally you would start with batch analytics if you are starting on a use case you are not trying to do like you know, real time things etc you are going to make it work however if you make it work and it's useful it's very very likely that your ceo asks oh how about can i get it faster right and then naturally the question would extend into can i predict what will happen okay so uh, basically the by defining a one uh, api to collect data right and basically by uh, define one api to collect data and decoupling these different types of analytics from how you publish the data basically you could publish once using one api and then you could analyze in any way you like right you publish you might start with batch but if you need uh, real time or you need predictive analytics it's uh, basically it could digest the same data we etc so so this is the model we are trying to push right this is the model it enable right so this shows the uh, the um, api to collect the data right this is if you want to write your own custom data agent however with our products if you are using our products or if you are using uh, like if you are ingesting logs etc you don't have to do this there are already agents uh, that's built like for example there's a jmx agent etc okay so uh, so these are some of these uh, already available agents right most of our products has um, uh, agents built in we could get uh, ingest data through logstash from jmx uh, from kafka jms etc rss feeds etc and if none of these works of course you can write your own one okay okay so now for analysis okay analysis basically internally we use apache spark right most probably most of you have heard about this this is you can think it as the few next better hadoop right is much faster right is much better technology okay so basically we use spark internally right so uh, for queries we let you write queries in a sql like language so this is true for uh, uh, batch analytics real time analytics and interactive analytics uh, not for the predictive analytics because it's it's very different right Uh, so uh, the uh, so so basically if you know sql you would understand the, the so this not ansi sql it's it's a variation of that right but you would understand most concepts right so uh, then there are some things that are hard to do in sql for those you could write um, uh, extensions basically there's a very well defined extension interfaces for each type of analytics you could write your own extension and do that part of work in your java code etc right so so uh, what they what this model try to cover is like cover about 90% of the use case directly on the sql and leave enough flexibility that the expert can go and do you his own things as well right so uh, uh, so so to recap so you could collect data now if you want to do batch analysis you could 
analyze it with this SQL-like queries. So one very good example is that our new ESB is shipping ESB and like very detailed ESB analytics. So what we have, our like data agents running ESB collect a lot of data, right? It'll, it'll do very detailed tracing. So you could actually, there are like two modes where you actually trace the message, which is expensive, or you can just trace the metadata, right? Then uh, after that, you could basically search by time or search by some string in the message, et cetera. You should then drill down, like uh, for example, let's say, you want to know what have, your customer and come and says that, oh, this transaction didn't work. So you might, you could put the, the transaction ID into the search and see the message that had the transaction ID, then pull the, all the messages in that transaction, right, and basically see and look into that, right? And we do like, so this picture is not very clear, but basically we could visualize the flow Right and do there is like that there's initial work on trying to find where the lot of time is spent, which obviously can be improved a lot, right? So so this is a very good use case of batch analytics. Okay. Okay. So the batch analytics is great. However, there are some use cases where value of the insight degrade very very fast, right? I mean, for example, uh, okay, if you are going to have a heart attack. It's better to know it right now rather than after you die. I mean, it's a curiosity only, right? So there are a lot of use cases like that, uh, just as I explained on that picture. Uh, so there are these use cases. If you want that, this is not for everything, obviously, right? This is more expensive than batch, right? But if you need that, there's different technologies. So we use uh, this technology called uh, complex event processing. Again, you could write your queries in SQL-like language. Not, it's not the same language because the, for this, the time, time temporal operations are required. So, uh, but you could write in SQL-like language. When you write the query and deploy, it'll uh, monitor the events, and when a match, match happens, it'll trigger. Okay, so. Uh, so, so this, uh, this is a use case actually both um, Sanjeev and Isabel talked about today. Uh, so basically, uh, the, these the beacons in the airport that tracks uh, where people are, et cetera, right? So it's a, again, it's a, it's, it's a real-time use case because you would know, you want to know where are the conditions, et cetera, right? So the, like the use cases are like one use case was that to monitor how long does it take to uh, clean the uh, uh, clean a plane, right? Because basically each each employee in the uh, the plane crew would carry a phone. We can basically they don't know those details. They have their has to have on on their on themselves. So you would know like when they enter, when they left, where they go, all kind of details, right? So. Uh, uh, this I'll uh, interest of time I won't run it, but uh, so this uh, uh, this is a famous use case I'm sure uh, most of you guys has seen at some point. Uh, so it's a basically uh, data collector from a real football game, and we had done like a lot of uh, interesting analytics on top of that uh, using real time technology. Okay, so uh, so also uh, the the CEP you could run. If your use case is complex, you could run it in a cluster on top of uh, Apache Strong. Okay, so basically you still write the SQL-like query. We take the query, decompose, and deploy it on top of Apache Strong. Right. So uh, you could, if you go here, you could find uh, more information. Okay, so that's fine. So that's the batch real time. The interactive means. Uh, I don't know what you are, uh, basically, I suddenly see, oh, I want to find this information. So I go and ask the system, give me this information, right? So you are, you are querying the system, query, the system would respond. So this is a different type of analysis, right? So we, in, we implement this using Solar internally, so you could issue queries and get results. Like, for example, that 
customer come and saying that my transaction didn't happen is that kind of use case because you don't know which customer will come and complain right only he comes you know uh, that's the requirement right uh, then the finally the predictive analytics so so uh, the one way to explain is that the to predict the future, I mean that's the more colorful version of it. But what actually this what this technology does is now uh, so some problems. If you know the algorithm, we could write the code, no problem, right? But if you are asked to write a code to drive a car, right? If you are a June like programmer who haven't programmed much, you would say fine, I'll write. But most of the like. Very good programmers say uh, they'll start thinking because if you have tried to do that, what would happen is that about 80% of the case, very easy, you will handle the conditions, break, turn left and right. However, there are a lot of conditions that you can't think of that doesn't work. It's very hard for us to, to know the algorithm exactly, draw it. So the way to solve this is you basically, there are learning algorithms where you get a lot of data and tell that, please figure out the program or the algorithm to do this thing. So it will look at the data and generalize and find how to, what's the right logic for doing this problem, like driving a car, character recognition, voice recognition, so on. Uh, the, similarly, the, the future prediction thing is you basically ask him, figure out the underlying function in this data and use that to predict into the future. Right? So, uh, so basically, with WSO, so we have uh, WSO2 machine learning, which is basically part of WSO2 DAS, our data analytics platform. So, with that, uh, so basically, it let you go through a wizard and build machine learning models, right? And basically, those models you build, sorry, I, uh, sorry, uh, the models you build, uh, so you you could build models, compare them then go to CPO, ESB, etc., and use that model, right? Basically, you put the sequence and put the ID, right? And that model would be available, right? So, okay. So, uh, uh, this, the other, again, so we'll talk about this use case. Basically, uh, so this actually in deployed in unit terminal now, basically, it will look in at historical data and current condition. It will predict how long would it take for you to go through the security at the airport. Okay, so so uh, so one very interesting topic we were talking work on a lot of detail into is anomaly detection. Uh, it's part of predictive analytics, right? So uh, we have like we had work on many different techniques for do this, right? So uh, one very interesting application of this is application into API analytics. Basically, it will look at your APIs, like there are response, uh, APIs response time, which APIs invoked in which order, so on and so forth. And basically, detect anomalies. You could turn on and off those and what you want to detect. And basically, let you know, right? Basically, these come as a, like pre-cooked things. You could turn on and off. You could also parameterize it, change the configuration, like decide how sensitive they are, etc. Uh, another very interesting observation is that actually m most of the IoT analytics are about anomalies because what you try to do with most or not all, most of the analytics is to find when something breaks, where the problems are, detect and react to those, right? So which turn, coming down to time series anomaly detection uh, and some forms of anomaly anomalies, right? Uh, finally, you want to communicate your results, right? So uh, basically, we support dashboards. Uh, one option is you could go to the JavaScript level and write your own dashboards, right? Also, we support this ga gadget generation uh, wizard that let you basically select a data type, tell from, oh, uh, my x-axis is that data, my y-axis is that data, and my point size is that data, so on and so forth, and it'll build a chart for this, chart for you, right? So, it, like, it's a trade-off. I mean, the amount of polish it can, Wizard can give is less. However, uh, it'll give you something very fast, right? So, um, so very good 
example of this is the analytics built into the IoT server, right? So we give like a lot of device level analytics. Also, uh, also you could like basically go to the data that's sent from your device, go through the wizard, create the chart, etc. All these things are integrated into the IoT server. Okay, so. Uh, uh, another very interesting form of communication is alerts, right? Uh, so it's it's pretty trivial to implement them on the CEP. Uh, so we now actually include the alert dashboard. Basically, you could see the all the alerts. You could um, uh, uh, find out what's going on, etc. The finally, uh, very interesting feature, which which this about close to a year old, but. We, we are using it more and more. So we support this analytics template where an expert programmer, a programmer who understands what he is doing, can write analytics scripts. They are parameterized scripts. Basically, you write a template, right? Basically, at several places, you have dollar, you put the parameters. Then, basically, for the end user, you only show a form. For API analytics use case, you ask, Oh, what's, uh, what's your percentile limit? 95 percentile or 99 percentile? That kind of question. So the end user only make a very simple choice. Then what happens is those, uh, the templates would be re uh, parameterized with those values, right? And again, de deployed as query. So this, we actually, most of our internal analytics works use this heavily. Okay, so uh, to wrap up, right? So uh, some of our so uh, basically we give a one platform right that you collect data, analyze th this data in many ways, and also communicate the results through dashboard alerts, etc. Right. So uh, I think one, uh, one few key points. Everything is free, open source. I think you already know that. Right. You could publish data once and analyze it any way you like. Right. Uh, so uh, basically, this setup, the, our deployments, you could use at a single node to play with it. Also, the same things you could go and deploy, right? Only at the deployment level, configuration changes. We let you write queries in SQL-like query languages. Okay. So um, and we have like a very broad set of uh, data connectors. Uh, so.